Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back and thanks for watching this video. And what I'm talking about in this video is whether or not functional programming is the future in 2016 and beyond. And I did a top 10 video a few months back, back in August, about the top 10 programming languages I think one should learn in 2016. Uh, and I, I would, <clears throat> I guess I should preface this by saying that I made that list uh, with the web programming world in mind for the most part. Um, although I did not try to ignore um, some of the trends that I felt were up and coming, um, I certainly didn't focus on niche areas or um, areas of computing that might revolutionize the way computing is done, um, you know, moving forward, maybe, you know, not just a year or two, but decades into the future. So I wasn't really trying to point out any sort of niche industries. And what this video about is whether or not a functional programming uh, language like Microsoft's Visual F Sharp or Scala, which is, um, they're both considered uh, purely functional programming languages. And the question is whether or not one of these two languages will actually emerge as, um, you know, really a, a top 10 contender in programming, like we see with Java or C Sharp uh, or one of those other already um, established languages. If you would read through the comments of that top 10 video that I did back in August, there is probably at least 30 or 40 different comments about why, uh, why a functional language or functional, purely functional language was not on the list. Now one of the main things that I looked at was whether or not you're actually going to be able to find a job in this industry. So when I go to Indeed.com and if I were to type F sharp, like at the moment of this video, on this date right now, what I'm looking at across the entire I'm assuming world, this is mostly United States, maybe it's just the United States, but there is only 181 jobs matching the F sharp description on Indeed.com. That's not very good. If I type Scala, which Scala is, is clearly the front runner in the functional programming world right now, I have 4,300 jobs, which is obviously a lot better than F sharp, but still not nearly as good as one would like if you're looking to get a job in the industry. Now if I go ahead and try to find another language, like maybe Haskell, a lot of people you know, will say Haskell, maybe Elixir. Um, Haskell has 354 jobs, Elixir has 65 jobs. So none of those languages um, really speak to me as something that I would want to learn as a top 10 in 2016 if I'm looking to get a job. Now, I need to mention some of the key points of why you would want to use a functional programming language because there is certainly an industry for it and it's certainly a growing industry and it will become bigger and bigger, I think, as we move into the future. And to explain that, so I'll give a description of what a purely functional language is and this is according to Wikipedia, so take it with a grain of salt. It says, in computer science, functional programming is a programming paradigm a style of building the structure and elements of computer programs that treats computation as the evaluation of mathematical functions and avoids changing state and mutable data. In short, you can think of a purely functional language as a language that is built around functions that call either themselves in a recursive manner or call other functions um, and never have to worry about changing state. Um, so it makes things very, very quick. The biggest benefit of a purely functional language, from what I understand, is that the uh, modern day computer processor is not necessarily getting any faster. More time and attention is being given towards computational processes, you know, through a processor via multiple cores as opposed to a single processor core that can actually um, handle more processing power and speed. So you're actually seeing processors become, you know, multi-cores, which is now a very common thing um, that you hear with like AMD or, you know, Intel uh, with their i7 processors. Uh, but they're multi-core processors. But the, but the problem is, is a lot of the languages that were invented uh, decades ago, they're, they're not built to take advantage of uh, concurrency and parallelism um, that modern multi-core processors should be able to handle. So purely functional language is supposed to be able to fill that void. It's supposed to be able to maximize your computer's potential for complex analysis like data crunching. So this is big for anybody that's into the data sciences tier 
Um, if you have to crunch through a ton of data and you're running things in parallel, um, a purely functional language is definitely where it's at. Now, in most cases though, your typical web developer isn't going to need to actually write a purely functional uh, code code base. Um, you know, they could always use probably some additional speed or something like that. But if I'm building a, a typical website, a CRUD application that creates, reads, updates, and deletes, um, you're not going to need a, a purely functional language for that. So the bottom line is that most of the jobs out there are not dealing with purely functional languages. Uh, myself, I've been in the enterprise um, software industry for uh, several years now. I've never once come across a, a purely functional language. Uh, in, in my industry. Um, also, at, uh, while I'm at home and I'm building websites and I'm learning new technologies, I haven't actually uh, found the need for a purely functional language. I have dipped into F Sharp just a little bit. Um, I think it's very, it's vastly different from C Sharp, uh, although there are some similarities, luckily, because I'm sure Scala is nothing like um, C Sharp. But um, the, the point is, um, you can do functional programming and some of the older languages that we're used to and we hear a lot about like JavaScript that is considered a functional language. Uh, it treats functions as first-class citizens meaning that you can have a, a variable X and it equals a function so functional languages allow you to do that not every language does uh, but JavaScript is one of them that does so we've all probably done JavaScript if you've done any sort of web development. So I guess my point is that the reason why I didn't include a purely functional language is because I don't see the need of you know why that would re really replace one of the you know the top ten languages that I did mention. Um, it is something that if I were going to build some sort of process and in intensive or if I was trying to build some sort of cutting edge uh, maybe web scraper or something like that that has to just crunch through tons of data, um, a purely functional language would probably be pretty good. Um, however, I can also write purely functional code in C sharp as well. So. Um, it's a little bit it's a little bit different, but C sharp's code base is just as capable as F sharp. Um, so, you know, depending on the language that you choose, uh, you may have the option of of writing in a, a purely functional way, uh, and that may be something that you want to look at. Uh, but if I was going to recommend a functional language to get into in 2016, I would definitely give the nod to Scala. They have the most jobs. They have the best trend as far as growth. Um, and they also have um, their footprint in the in the industry. Um, they have a, a decent footprint so far, so a lot of companies are using them. Um, F Sharp, uh, I'm not really sure. I, I can't really say that I would recommend that at this point. Um, I would say if you're in the the .NET world and you're already doing C Sharp, you may just want to look at, at how to do you know functional programming in C Sharp, uh, or give F Sharp a whirl. But uh, I, I've yet to see it be adopted by a lot of uh, large companies to date. So anyway, guys, that's my justification for whether or not I think functional programming is the future um, in the immediate future. Uh, the answer is I don't see it yet, but I'm not an expert and I'm not a data scientist. So um, I'm sure different industries would uh, would have a, a different opinion on that. Um, do I think it's a good language to learn? Um, definitely, because it's it's a completely different paradigm from what you're probably used to if you've never done something like that before. So it's something that I would like to take up some time and learn. but. Um, you know, there's time is a, of a time. I don't have a ton of time, I guess, and um, I have to kind of choose wisely on what sort of projects I want to work on. And uh, when I dipped into F Sharp a few months ago, I just I realized that I still have a lot to learn in C Sharp before I jump to F Sharp. And I just I didn't I didn't want to mix the two because um, I feel like it wouldn't help me in the immediate future. But let me know if you guys disagree. And I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, just uh, Please subscribe if you would. I thank everybody that has subscribed so far, and I appreciate all the support. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Um, I do try to respond to everybody's questions, and if I didn't respond to you, I apologize. It's not that I did it on purpose. Sometimes I just don't see the comments. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and have a good day. Bye.